Greetings and salutations. It is the middle of the night. I cannot sleep. I got to thinking about some of the comments that I received on a recent video, part of the series called Linux Terminal Basics. In the first video, I talked about a set of commands called pushd and popd, and I said they were really neat commands, very cool, and I really did not explain them well. People get them confused with other shortcuts that you can use to move around from directory to directory. So in this video, what I'd like to do is really take a good hard look at those commands and show you exactly how they work and why I think they are so cool. Pushd and popd were like one of the first things that I learned when I really started paying close attention to Unix and Linux, and that would have been in the late 90s. And I was just so impressed with how they worked. So instead of using CD to go into the ETC directory, I'm going to use pushd. And you notice it's telling us that we've gone to ETC and then it has the abbreviation for the home directory there, which is uh, the tilde. What we have done is we have pushed the home directory on a stack, a memory stack. And the way memory stacks work, it's like stacking up dishes. You can only take things out of the stack in the reverse order that you put them on. So if you stack a bunch of dishes one after the other, you can't really reach down and grab the fourth dish down and pull it out. You have to take the top one off and then the one under that and under that to get to it. That's the idea. So if I now want to jump to another directory, I can use push D yet again. And I am going to push D into the var directory. That's where all of the variable stuff like logs and system mail and caches and stuff is, right? So let's jump over there. Now you see that the stack has gotten bigger. It says that uh, we've gone from home to etc to var. Our present working directory is var, so that we can work here as much as we want to. Now, this is how the popd command works. Popd that puts us back into ETC. If I do popd one more time, look, it puts us back into home. And if I do popd again, it says the stack's empty. Now, people usually get this confused with this notion right here. So if I go to cd etc again, change directory to etc, like so, another way that I can get back to my home directory is to use this one right here which is cd space hyphen that takes me back to the directory that I came out of and people say well you don't need to use push d and pop d and yes if I'm only going back one directory not a problem but watch this I'm going to cd into etc and then I'm going to cd again into var and then I'm going to use CD to go back. And it takes me back to ETC. So if I do CD again with the hyphen, it's not going to automatically take me back home. It doesn't remember. It only knows the last directory we were in. So it goes back to var. So if I re-enter re that command one more time, watch. We just keep switching back and forth. The system has forgotten that we started out from the home directory. Here's an interesting little twist on this story, though. And that is, there's another way to get back to the home directory. We can, uh, you know, CD like this. And that would take us directly into home. Well, actually, it wouldn't. It would, uh, this would take us directly into home. So we'll go ahead and do that and see it puts us back into home. But we don't even need to do that. Uh, so let's cd to etc one more time. How about doing it right? There we go. Now, if I just type in cd, I go back to the home directory. And that works from wherever I am in the system, even if I have used pushd to put, a stuff, put stuff on the stack. So let's show you that. Now watch this. 
go to push D and I go to ETC yeah ETC and we'll push D again and then we will go to var so we've put that on the stack if I just do CD it takes me right back home but guess what we still have a directory stack takes me back to ETC that's the directory going up the stack we've went up one from there now you're getting an idea of how this is different so if I do pop D again and then finally just to drive the point home pop D and there's nothing on the stack so that is what makes it different even though there are many other shortcuts that do what essentially looks like the same thing it's not the same thing because it remembers wherever you're going so when you're just working at a command line that might not seem to be terribly useful and if you're only going one directory at a time uh, then you can just use CD or CD with the hyphen and you'll get the same effect see if I can find a script here that uses push D and pop D to show you so we are eh, let's see this one works yes so sometimes in a script when you are writing uh, instructions for the shell to do automatically one of the things that you have to do is you have to switch into another uh, directory and then you have to get back to wherever you are well here's the thing if you have a script or any program on a Unix like system like Linux you can run it from any directory so what this script does is uh, and these are very easily recognizable to commands uh, to most people uh, first of all I look for a program called GDB which I prefer to use at the command line for dealing with deb packages because it resolves all the dependencies and it's very verbose I know that these days you can do dpkg install and then you can make up for the dependencies and I think nowadays you can even just do an apt in other words you can say sudo apt install name of deb package in the directory it'll do it I still like to use old GDB so we have to make sure GDB is installed which what this that's what this line does it just goes and looks for it right there that's another little piece of code that I find fascinating. There's a lot going on with that little piece of code right there. So then it removes Firefox and it gets rid of that. And then it goes and it looks for Firefox configuration files. And that's what this if statement does right here. It says if it finds it, get rid of it. And it makes it go away. So that's what these two do. So the idea is, is that we have purged the system of every trace of Firefox and then down here the last part we're going to download Google Chrome and we're going to install it so the first thing that we're going to do is make a directory in the temporary directory which all users have access to and we create a directory where we are going to uh, keep our deb file that we're going to download from Google so we have to have a place for that to go so we create the directory and then we use push D to go to that directory right there that's what this line does yeah. and then we use a utility called wget to run out and grab Google Chrome from the Google servers and it downloads it and then once it gets here we use the GW package to install Google Chrome once Google Chrome is installed we pop D and that automatically jumps us back down on the stack to wherever we started from then we have uh, a command here to remove that directory including the installation file from the temporary directory now if for some reason or another this didn't the machine would do it the next time it rebooted anyway but I like to go ahead and just clear things out good idea to clean up after yourself and that's how this particular little script works 
it can be launched from anywhere. It can be launched from document slash scripts where it lives, uh, or it can be launched from the home directory. It doesn't make any difference. With pushd and popd, I don't have to know where I am to know where I'm going or how to get back there. So that is the straight poop on pushd and popd. And if you're wondering where that comes from, you're a young whippersnapper. That's an old, old, old uh, saying from way back a long time ago. Give me the straight poop. Well, you got the straight poop. Thank you for watching the video. Your feedback is always welcome. And you can check out these links in the description to the video. You can check out easylinux.com. Check out Easy Talk, which is our group that we have a discussion going on all the time there. And then also check out uh, Easy Linux on Facebook if you are a Facebook user. And if you would, give it a like. It certainly is very much appreciated. Thanks for watching.